Hey Canaanites, welcome back. Previously we covered the arms and vehicles at the disposal of the UNSC, and today we'll do the same for the Covenant. For as iconic as the UNSC's armory can be, the Covenant weaponry and vehicles are just as recognizable and distinct, if not more so. When developing Halo, Bungie wanted to create a hard contrast between the UNSC and the Covenant, and this was achieved by giving the UNSC traditional ballistic weaponry, while the Covenant wielded more futuristic plasma-based weapons. Starting us off is the Type 25 Directed Energy Pistol, a Covenant infantry firearm manufactured by the Sanghelios-based Iru Iru Armory. Like most Covenant weapons, the plasma pistol is reverse-engineered from Forerunner technology and powered by a battery cell. Similar to human weapons, the plasma pistol has a safety in the form of a holographic button located on the rear of the gun, which is pressed by the user to activate the weapon. The plasma pistol has two firing modes, a semi-automatic mode and an overcharged shot. The semi-automatic mode is pretty straightforward, delivering a bolt of superheated plasma with each pull of the trigger. The overcharged shot is activated by holding down the trigger, which charges a powerful plasma bolt. When the trigger is released, the charged shot is fired, which has limited tracking ability and can give off a powerful EMP upon impact with a target. The CMP can knock out energy shields and disable vehicles. Like all Covenant Plasma weapons, the firing of this weapon causes a buildup of heat. The heat can be dissipated by ceasing fire and letting heat levels drop, but if the weapon is fired too long or an overcharged shot is used, it will automatically and quickly vent the heat. Plasma pistols are commonly used by weaker Covenant infantry such as grunts, jackals, and skirmishers. The Type 25 Directed Energy Rifle, more commonly called the Plasma Rifle, is a fully automatic rifle manufactured by the Iru Iru Armory and the primary weapon used by the Covenant Officer Corps. Though most commonly wielded by elites, lower caste species who have obtained significant rank can sometimes be equipped with it. The Plasma Rifle was originally created during the War of Beginnings by the elites and its design has gone largely unchanged in the millennia since. Powered by a battery cell, the plasma rifle fires bolts of superheated plasma in rapid succession. This causes a buildup of heat, which eventually causes it to vent the heat. A heat gauge along the side allows a wielder to see how hot the weapon is getting. Ideally, the weapon is fired in short controlled bursts. The plasma rifle can easily strip through energy shields and, especially early in the war, easily melted through UNSC armor, which up to that point had been primarily designed to counter ballistic weaponry. The UNSC eventually developed more effective armor, often using a ceramic coating, but this did little to stop the deadly plasma. Known as the Type 51 Directed Energy Rifle Improved, the Plasma Repeater is another Iru Iru Armory original and functions very similarly to the Plasma Rifle. One of the key differences is how it handles heat buildup. With the Plasma Repeater, the weapon does not automatically vent heat after a certain amount of buildup. Instead, the weapon simply fires more slowly and inaccurately. At any time, be it after significant heat buildup or after a handful of shots, the wielder can manually vent the weapon in part or completely. The Type 25 carbine, also known as the Spiker or Spike Rifle, is a fully automatic brute firearm manufactured by High Charity's Sacred Promissory. The Spiker fires long, sharp, superheated metal rounds, hence the weapon's name, at 480 rounds per minute. The weapon's magazine holds 40 rounds, and a pair of tungsten carbide blades are mounted under the barrel, making the spiker extremely deadly at close quarters. Despite being classified as a carbine or rifle by human standards, the weapon is much closer to a pistol in the hands of the massive brutes. The spiker was one of the first Covenant weapons encountered by humanity, having been used by brutes during the initial invasion of Harvest. The Type 33 Guided Munitions Launcher, aka the Needler, is one of the more truly alien weapons in the Covenant arsenal. Manufactured in the Sacred Promissory, the Needler is one of the only Covenant weapons that was not reverse engineered from Forerunner technology and, stranger still, captured Needler units have revealed no electronic, physical, or radiological connection between the weapon's trigger and firing mechanism. The Needler fires pink crystalline shards that will somehow home in on a heat signature, tracking it through the air and embedding itself into a target. After a few seconds, the crystal will detonate. When enough shards have embedded themselves in a target, they seem to react to each other in a violent explosion, often called a super combine explosion. Needler ammunition is a material known as blamite, which is mined from the Sanghelios moon called Suban. 
A Needler ammo cartridge can vary in size, but the Halo Reach Needler holds 24 rounds per cartridge. The Type 31 Needle Rifle is an infantry weapon manufactured by the Sacred Promissory. Commonly used by elites, brutes, jackals, and skirmishers, the weapon fires razor-sharp projectiles made of blamite, similar to the Needler. Also like the Needler, the projectiles will embed themselves in a target and, after enough shots land, create a super combine explosion, ripping a target apart. Unlike the Needler, however, the Needle Rifle's rounds do not track their target, instead firing in a straight line at high velocity. This makes it ideal for mid- to long-range combat. The Needle Rifle holds 21 rounds per ammo cartridge and can be fired semi-automatically and fully automatically. The Type 50 Directed Energy Rifle Heavy, also known as the Concussion Rifle, is a Covenant weapon manufactured by the Sanghili merchants of Kikost. Kikost being one of the two moons of the elite homeworld of Sanghelios. It is another legacy weapon whose origins predate the Covenant. Though its appearance has changed in the millennia since, its function has remained largely the same. During the Covenant War, the weapon saw limited use, leading the UNSC to speculate that the weapon may be restricted to certain branches or units within the Covenant. The concussion rifle fires explosive bolts of plasma and unlike many other Covenant weapons, uses a magazine feed system. A typical magazine holds six shots. The Type 1 Energy Weapon Slash Sword, commonly known as the Energy Sword or Plasma Sword, is an elite close quarters weapon manufactured by High Charities Assembly Forges. Historically, the Energy Sword was seen as an expression of a warrior's combat skill and honor. The elites are very strict about who can wield the swords, and among civilians, only aristocrats are allowed to wield them. Within the Covenant military, restrictions on swordsmanship are a bit more lax, though elite miners generally aren't allowed to wield an Energy Sword. Exceptions to this rule have been observed, however. In Sanghili society, swordsmen are not eligible for marriage, but can instead breed with any female they desire, married or otherwise, to ensure the transmission of swordsman genes. The energy sword works by using magnetic fields to shape superheated plasma into two long blades. The plasma is hot enough to cut into most material, and especially flesh, with relative ease. Typically, the type of a covenant weapon is determined by the year it was first documented. So, a plasma rifle being a Type 25 weapon was first documented in 2525. Why the energy sword and certain other weapons are designated as Type 1 or Type 2 remains unclear. The Type 2 energy weapon slash hammer, also known as the gravity hammer, is a brute weapon manufactured by the Sacred Promissory. Like many brute weapons, the design was inspired by the technology native to the brute homeworld, but with some integrated Covenant tech. In the case of the Gravity Hammer, this is the gravity drive integrated into the hammer's head. When swung, the head will generate a gravity field, crushing anything beneath it, and flinging anything in the area far away from the user. A large blade along the back can also be used to lethal effect. Gravity Hammers are based on traditional war hammers that brute pack leaders would wield both in the days before the Covenant and after they joined. Notably, the current design is based on upgrades made to the Fist of Rukt, an ancient hammer now wielded by the brute named Tartarus. Gravity hammers are most commonly wielded by brute chieftains as a symbol of their leadership, but have been seen used by brute captains as well. The Type 33 light anti-armor weapon, known as the Fuel Rod Gun, is a shoulder-mounted fired mortar weapon manufactured by the Assembly Forges. Essentially an infantry portable version of the Fuel Rod Cannon mounted on some Covenant vehicles, the Fuel Rod Gun is often employed in anti-infantry and anti-vehicle roles. The Fuel Rod Gun fires five rounds of Class II 38mm radioactive fuel rods that explode on impact. Held in clips and loaded into the rear of the gun, the fuel rods are made of a substance known as incendiary gel, the same substance that powers Hunter assault cannons. Incendiary gel is an imperfect form of infusion gel, a power source once used by the Forerunners. For much of the Human Covenant War, fuel rod guns featured a dead man switch, meaning that they would explode after the wielder died. In late 2552, however, variants of the weapon without this feature started appearing on the battlefield. The Type 52 Guided Munitions Launcher Explosive is a type of Covenant explosives launcher manufactured by the Assembly Forges. A shoulder-mounted weapon, the plasma launcher fires up to four guided plasma bolts that can lock on and track enemy troops and vehicles alike. The featured 2.5x zoom makes hitting distant targets easier as well. 
Like the fuel rod gun, the plasma launcher is often wielded by grunt heavies, elites, and brutes. The Type 52 Special Applications Rifle, more commonly known as the Focus Rifle, is a sniper-style Covenant rifle manufactured by the Assembly Forges. Seemingly derived from the energy beam used by Forerunner Aggressor Sentinels, the Focus Rifle fires a concentrated beam of electromagnetically guided plasma at high velocity. To aid in targeting, the weapon features a 3.5 and 9.5 times zoom. Though meant for range suppression rather than anti-personnel, the superheated plasma and sustained fire does kill quickly enough against unshielded enemies, and the plasma can cut through energy shields with ease. The weapon is rarely seen on the immediate battlefield, most commonly wielded by sniper jackals from afar. The Type 52 Directed Energy Support Weapon, commonly referred to as the Plasma Cannon, is a type of Class 1 Directed Energy Cannon manufactured by the Assembly Forges. Firing bolts of superheated plasma at 300 rounds per minute, the Plasma Cannon is ideal for heavy ground support, and due to its cooling units, the weapon generally doesn't overheat, allowing for sustained, continuous fire. Designed to be easily moved and deployed, this results in little protection for the operator with only three small energy shields providing protection. Like the UNSC machine gun, the plasma cannon can be removed from its mount for mobile use. In the field, the weapon is commonly used by grunt heavies, and occasionally as a mobile weapon by elite generals. The Type 1 anti-personnel grenade, also called the plasma grenade or sticky grenade, is the grenade of choice for the Covenant and manufactured by the Iru Iru Armory. The grenade's casing is made of a smart matter program to stick to infantry targets. When primed, the grenade will begin to vent its coolant. After it is thrown, the venting allows the grenade to become hot enough that it will burn into the surface of any target it lands on. Once stuck, there is normally no way to remove the grenade, though a powerful electromagnetic shield can de-stick the grenade. Plasma grenades have an effective kill radius of 3.96 meters or 13 feet, and a casualty radius of 12.9 meters or 42 feet. And that covers the weapons, which of course brings us to the vehicles. Naming conventions for Covenant vehicles among the UNSC are rather interesting, with many being named after various types of spirits and supernatural beings from human mythology, and often given names that reflect the vehicle's usage or some other aspect of the vehicle. Starting us off is the Type 32 Rapid Attack Vehicle or Ghost, a one-man recon and rapid attack craft manufactured by the Iru Iru Armory. Propelled by a boosted gravity propulsion drive, the Ghost is incredibly maneuverable and quick. The vehicle can smart link to a user's armor system, and a large holographic display on the console provides a large view of the battlefield. The Ghost lacks any sort of covering for the cockpit, likely an intentional design by elites to display their fearlessness. While some Ghosts feature a boost and some do not, the variants deployed on Reach notably had a limited boost function. Ghosts are armed with twin Class II directed energy cannons and commonly fielded by elites and grunts. The Type 48 Light Assault Gun Carriage, known as the Revenant, is a mobile artillery vehicle manufactured by the merchants of Keycost. The Revenant is something of a unique vehicle among the Covenant, having its origins as a utility vehicle for elite frontiersmen traveling the wilderness of Keycost's hunting preserves. Over time, the vehicle was modified into a military one. The design used during the Covenant War had seating for a driver, who would drive and operate the Class II plasma mortar on the rear, along with a side gunner. The vehicle's origins leave the driver and passenger very exposed, but the quick maneuverability, boost ability, and firepower make up for the lack of relative safety. Being privately produced unlike many other Covenant vehicles, the Revenant was a rare sight on the battlefield. Its operators would also often work to ensure they left no survivors when encountered. The Type 26 Assault Gun Carriage, also known as the Wraith, is the Covenant's main battle tank. Like many other Covenant vehicles, the Wraith is propelled by a boosted gravity propulsion drive, allowing it to float above the ground and thus traverse all types of terrain with ease. It also features the standard temporary boost. The Wraith's primary weapon is the Type 26 Directed Energy Mortar, which fires an arcing shot of plasma through the air over great distances. The Wraith also has anti-infantry support from its gunner, who operates a ring-mounted Type 52 plasma cannon. The Scarab comes in a variety of flavors, but today we'll be looking at the Type 47B Deuteros Ultra Heavy Assault Platform. Classified as a Tier 4 excavator, the Scarab was originally designed for mining operations. As an assault platform, its legs allow the vehicle to traverse all types of terrain, 
and it can carry up to 50 security personnel. The Scarab is an odd machine by human standards, as it is not driven by an AI, but by a massive colony of the same Letgolo worms that make up hunters. Despite the use of living creatures, the Letgolo colonies are rarely given complete control and require an elite or brood supervisor to guide the assault platform. Scarabs can be dropped into battle from low orbit and move at speeds up to 76 km per hour or 47 miles per hour. They are armed with a face-mounted heavy focus cannon, a rear-mounted heavy plasma cannon, and often have three Type 52 cannons for anti-infantry support. The Type 25 troop carrier commonly called the Spirit, jokingly called the Tuning Fork by UNSC ground troopers, and known to the Covenant as a Dextro Zur class dropship, is a dropship used by the Covenant to ferry troops to and from the battlefield. It is manufactured by the Assembly Forges. A rather simple design, the Spirit features a cockpit for a pilot and sensor operator, usually grunts or jackals, and can carry up to 30 troops into battle. The troops are deployed from two personnel bays. Between these two bays is a gravity hoist, which can carry two light vehicles or one heavy vehicle into battle. A low-mounted Murian pattern heavy plasma cannon provides defense for the dropship when it deploys. The Type 52 troop carrier, known as the Phantom, is another dropship used by the Covenant and manufactured by the Assembly Forges. The Type 52 model replaces the previously used Type 44 Phantoms and saw expanded use in the final year of the Human Covenant War. The Phantom features a cockpit for a crew of four, a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, and an operations officer, and can carry up to 30 troops into battle. Troops can be deployed from a gravity lift in the belly of the Phantom, though more commonly and perhaps for quicker deployment, troops will be deployed from the bay doors on either side of the Phantom. Phantoms are armed with a nose-mounted heavy plasma cannon, and two Type 52 plasma cannons that deploy when the bay doors are open, providing anti-infantry support to the deploying troops. Phantoms are propelled by twin impulse drives. Along with troops, Phantoms can also carry two light vehicles such as Ghosts, or a single medium to large vehicle like a Revenant or a Wraith, into battle. Another variant of the Phantom saw deployment on Reach, known as the Phantom Gunboat. This variant was vacuum sealed for operation in exo-atmospheric conditions. It was armed with a nose-mounted heavy plasma cannon and four side-mounted plasma turrets, two on each side. It also featured a forward-facing energy shield strong enough to deflect missile attacks. The Type 26 ground support aircraft, known as the Banshee, is the standard assault aircraft used by the Covenant, manufactured by the Assembly Forges. The specific variant featured in Halo Reach is the Type 26B. Unlike the Type 26A and C variants of the Banshee, the T-26B's cockpit is fully enclosed and can even be modified for operation in space. The Banshee features the standard boosted gravity propulsion drives the Covenant use, with two jet and anti-gravity pods at the tips of the wings. These can leave a vaporous trail in the Banshee's wake, and also create something of a howling cry for which the Banshee is known. With its engines, the Banshee can achieve speeds up to 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour, and features a boost mode for added speed. It can perform a variety of complex aerial maneuvers colloquially called Banshee Tricks. The Banshee is armed with two Class II DEML-AW plasma bolt slash diffused cannons and a Class II HAAW-M heavy fuel rod cannon. The fuel rods fired by the Banshee are often referred to as Banshee Bombs. Halo Reach also features a second type of Banshee, the Type 27 Exoatmospheric Multi-Role Fighter, also known as the Space Banshee, Banshee Fighter, or Banshee Interceptor, and also manufactured by the Assembly Forges. This variant is specifically made for engagements in space and uses an impulse drive. It's armed with two heavy plasma cannons and a Class II projectile fuel rod cannon. Finally, we have the Type 31 Exoatmospheric Multi-Role Fighter, aka the Seraph, the Covenant's main space fighter. Manufactured by the Assembly Forges, the Seraph in Halo Reach is known as a Morsom Pattern Seraph. Also propelled by an impulse drive, unlike the Space Banshee, the Seraph is slipspace capable and features energy shielding. Shaped almost like a teardrop and often stored in overhead compartments in a ship's hangar bay when not in use, the Seraph fulfills a number of roles in a Covenant fleet, from strike fighter to use in ship-to-ship -ship combat in dogfights to escorts. The Morsom Pattern Seraph is equipped with two pulse lasers, two plasma cannons, and a plasma charge. 
Plasma charges are the equivalent of an unguided bomb or rocket. And that covers the Covenant Armory in Halo Reach. It's quite varied and to this day is probably the most diverse a Halo campaign has been. However, there is more to Halo Reach's overall armory. In future episodes, we'll talk about armor abilities, the Mark V-B platform used by Spartans, and the armors used by the Covenant. Until then, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canaanites.